Welcome back. This is the second video in the series of using KiCad to create a schematic and PCB. In this video, I'll be ex explaining how to start using KiCad and especially modifying symbols and creating new symbols. Once you've installed KiCad, then double click on the shortcut icon on your desktop and it opens the, what we call the project manager window. This controls all the different programs in the KiCad suite. Uh, on the left is a panel that shows previously worked on programs, you know, recent programs. And then across the top, in a workflow order, in other words, the order that you're going to use the programs are the series of programs that you're going to use. First is EE Schema, which is the schematic layout editor. There's also a symbol editor that you can use to create or modify new symbols within KiCad. A PCB layout editor, footprint editor, Gerber viewer to view the files that you're going to print, and a few other programs that can be helpful when working with your schematic. The first thing you want to do is start a new project. You uh, name your project and decide where you want to save it since we're building a continuity tester. And I'm going to save that in my KiCad main folder. Each project it saves with its own folder, so all my uh, files that are associated with Continuity Tester will be saved in that folder. You notice how it, it puts that in my left hand window, so now if I click on Schematic Layout Editor, it comes up. Now sometimes, the first time you start the program, it may come up with a thing that says you need to associate the library files with it. Library files are just files of all the known components, so you can associate all these libraries or create your own library. So to start out with, you want to draw or import your schematic symbol. So I'm going to refer to my schematic. Looks like the main component is this 555 IC. So let's find that and put that symbol into KiCad. Across the top is your menu of icons to, to move through the workflow. And right now I'm in the program EE Schema. If you look up at the top left, EE Schema is the program I'm currently working with to develop the schematic or they call it capture the schematic. And on the right hand side are my tools that I can use to place components and connections between the components. The third icon down is place symbol. So I can click on that one and then come over to the sheet. If you use the center mouse wheel you can scroll in and out of the sheet. Depending on where you're at it'll scroll wherever you're centered. So once I click on there it loads the symbol libraries then you can browse through these libraries forever, but they have provide a really good filter program. So if I know I need a 555 timer, I can just go to the filter and type in 555. And here's a bunch of 555s I can look through. Um, I'm not sure exactly which one. I mean, there's so many. And that's one of the problems with KiCad for beginners is you're not sure which component it is. Um, so let me give you a little help on how to maybe find what component it is. So you don't know. So if you open up a new browser window on the internet, if you search for a 555 data sheet, different companies that manufacture these will provide data sheets for their components. So here's one from Texas Instruments. It says LM555. And a lot of times you'll, you'll be able to find the, the part number, the package type, and it tells you what sizes they are. The, so that can give you some hints and clues. I'm going to use a PDIP. And if you don't know, that stands for a dual inline package. So it's got eight pins, four on each side. And that's a, a tip that if you search for a data sheet, a lot of times it'll give you some clues of which part you want to select in KiCad. So now I go back to KiCad and I say, oh, well, okay, let's, let's find an LM555. Typing in 555 to the library filter brings me a whole bunch of 555s. This one down here is a PDIP like it showed in the in the data sheet. I'll select that one. Notice the pin locations are in different places than the schematic that I have. And that's not a big deal. I could reroute the wiring to attach to the right pins. But let's say I want to instead redesign my symbol to put the pins in these locations. And I can do that. At this point, Notice how I selected the LM555XN, but it's showing this one. That's because many of these are aliases of the same design. So I'm going to right click on any 555P and say copy that symbol, but I want to put it in a new library, my own library. So go to File, New Library, 
You want to create a new library for your own designs because the libraries that are included in KiCad are not sometimes editable and any changes you save it won't save them or when you download the new versions of KiCad as they're released it'll overwrite them so if you can create your own libraries so I'm gonna go here it wants to know where I wanna what I wanna call the library and where I wanna save it I I don't wanna save it under the continuity tester folder so I'm gonna click on a KiCad and go back one level let's call it practice library and then it asks you if you want to make it global or project specific. If you choose project specific, you'll only be able to use that symbol that you create in that particular project. But if you put it global, then any project you start in the future or, or want to use could go back and access that one. So I'm going to make it a global library. But now I need to change this symbol and edit it. Then I, I want to copy this symbol. So again, if you haven't already copied it, go click on the symbol, right click on it, go down to copy, then find your new library. So if you go up to the library filter, we called ours practice library. So if you click on that and then right click and go to paste symbol, it pastes that symbol and all of its aliases. So once you've pasted it, open it up, double click on it. I can rename it what I want. I can delete all the aliases and be left only with the original. And there's my new 555 timer design. And I can of course go to file and save that symbol. So if I look at my schematic, pin 1 is at the bottom. So I'll leave that there. Then it's pin 2, then 6. So I can find pin 2. Now here's one of the nice things with KiCad. If you move your mouse cursor click and hold and drag over any component it'll highlight that component and then I can move it around just drag it with your mouse now I'd like to attach it here but it's it's facing horizontal I need it vertical so you can rotate that if you right click then you can it gives you a bunch of choices of what you can do with that symbol so I can rotate it clock counterclockwise or notice it has a little letter R out to the side those are called hotkeys and this is one of the things I love about KiCad using the hotkeys makes it so much faster. So I can just type the letter R on my keyboard and it'll rotate it counterclockwise. If I want to mirror it around the Y axis, I type Y, mirror around the X axis so it'll flip it. I can type X. You can do any of these things. So I'm going to just click somewhere else. Again, click and drag over it so that it kind of doles it out. Then I can just type the letter R and it rotates it. Now I can attach it anywhere I want. So pin 2 goes there, pin 6 was where pin 4 is, so I'll move pin 4 off for now. And might as well move pin 5 out of the way for now. I can grab pin 6 and drag it over to this side, but notice it's facing the wrong direction. But if I use that hotkey Y, it'll flip it around the Y axis. Now I can paste it there. Again, just to paste it, just click with your left click on the mouse button. It'll drop it. Let's go back and look at my schematic again. I have pin 7, then 4, then 8. So again, click and drag to highlight. Flip a Y, hotkey Y. Pin 8's already at the top. I need pin 4 at the top, so again, I can grab this. I can click R to rotate. This is a strange looking pin. It's got this a circle at the bottom. All the rest just have a line. I don't need that circle. So if I right click and go to edit, or again, if if I knew that the hotkey was E, I just hit edit and it says, okay, here's the graphic style. I don't want to invert it. I just want a line. Okay, now it's a line. So I can grab that again and move it to where I want. Let's go back and look at our original again, and pin 3 is on the right side, and pin 5 it doesn't show. So I'll just move pin 3 down. Pin 5, flip it around its y-axis, so hotkey y again, and I'm going to attach pin 5, but it will have no connection. I have all eight of my pins in the same positions as they are in my original schematic, so it'll be easier for me to lay it out the way this looks. That's how you can edit any symbol to create your own symbols. Uh, you can also create them from scratch if you go over to this left toolbar 
I can have, add pins to any symbol, I can add text, I can add a graphic, rectangles, circles, arcs. For example, if I grabbed a rectangle, you just click somewhere on the board, left click, drag it to whatever shape you want, and then click again, and it leaves that. To end, say, you know, if I click, it keeps wanting to drag, and I, I don't want the draw tool anymore. So you can right click and do cancel. If you right click anywhere else, you can select end tool, or if you notice, you can just select that up here with the, the cursor. So once I've selected the end tool, now if I left click, it doesn't leave drawings. So if I highlight something, I can drag it around, move it, or just delete if I've got something I don't want. Again, highlight over it and delete. So let me highlight that and delete that since I don't need it. Now I've got my symbol the way I want it. I can go over to File and hit Save. And now I've got my new symbol, 555 that I've saved in my library, practice library. Now if I close the, oh, and it, if you try to close, it asks if I wanted to save the changes to the practice library. Go over to my place symbol, click on my sheet, but this time I'll search in the filter for 555, and I'm gonna find it from my practice library. That's the one that I was using. So I'll click on that and hit okay, and notice now that's my new symbol that I created. So to review, I've just shown you how to open KiCad, select the symbol editor, select a symbol from the libraries, and redesign that symbol and save it in a new library. We'll add all the components before we add the connecting wires between them. So I'll end this video here and continue with video three to complete capturing the schematic.